All right, hey, thanks for watching another video from WeldingTipsAndTricks.com. I'm Jody Collier. We're doing a little overhead stick welding today with 7018 1/8 diameter electrodes. You know, the, the main thing I can tell you for overhead stick welding is set the machine hot enough that the rod won't stick when you hold a tight arc, then hold a tight arc. It's not quite as simple as that because you've got so many different kind of machines with different volt amperage curves. You've got inverter machines that now have arc control where, where when you set it more of a dig, a higher dig setting, the amperage actually boosts when your arc gets tight. Your machine senses a tight arc, it senses a drop in voltage, and it bumps your amperage up to keep you from sticking the rod. So that changes everything. So you can sometimes you know, use a higher dig setting and a lower amperage or a higher amperage with a lower dig setting. There's lots of variables, but the, the rule still comes, comes into play. Don't set it cold for welding overhead. You, got, you want to set it not quite as hot, but almost as hot as you would flat or horizontal. You need, a, you need a good hot arc so that you can keep a good tight arc without sticking the rod. That's one of the keys to stick welding overhead with 7018. Let's get into it. I've got this machine set hot enough that I can hold a pretty darn tight arc without the rod sticking, at least once I get it started. You have to sort of long arc it a little bit usually to get a, a, to get a good arc started, but then you want to be able to hold a nice tight arc. So I'm using a tight arc. I'm not using much drag angle either. And I stopped because I want to show you now a little example of how not to weld overhead with 7018. All I'm going to do here is hold a much longer arc. And this is kind of where I really screwed up when I was learning. And you can see big balls of fire just kind of big blobbing down and hitting my feet and everything. And this, is, this was me in welding school. Just burned myself all up. And I didn't understand at that time that a tight arc would prevent this from happening. So you need a tight arc, not excessive rod angle, and enough amperage so that the rod won't stick when you hold the tight arc. And that's just a mess right there. Undercut, slag, I had all kind of BBs hitting my, near my feet. And all I did differently here, didn't, didn't touch the machine, all I did is tighten that arc up and everything's going a whole lot better. So this is the last half of the weld here. You see I'm not using much rod angle here at all because toward the end of the rod, even at 125 amps, you, you can set up a little something called arc blow and you really have to hold a tight arc and I've found that holding a, that a straight in angle like this instead of rod angle kind of helps prevent undercut toward the end of a weld like this. Okay, this is quarter inch thick metal and that's one single pass in there and sometimes that might be enough. But this is a practice piece. So the idea here is to get the most out of the metal and, and we're gonna stack a lot of beads in here. The first bead is gonna be using an angle about like this. And I'm gonna try to overlap it more than halfway and then the, anytime I'm making that last tie in bead to the top member, I'm gonna point it up more like this. To, that'll, help, that'll help placement and it'll also help with undercut. We'll get started here, and you can see I'm, I'm overlapping more than halfway. I'm just leaving just a little bit of that first bead even, even is going to be visible. And that's just kind of the way it, it kind of needs to be in order to stack things in there and have them come out with an even leg fillet. So I'm not doing a whole lot of intentional movement here. Uh, any movement is just me shaking around a little bit. I'm just trying to kind of hold steady, maybe just make the tiniest of little circles, but that's not... That's not really uh, necessary at all. It's just strictly a, a drag rod. You can make slight manipulations, slight side to side, but dragging it works just fine too. Now you may notice this is hot rolled steel. There's mill scale coating on it and I didn't clean anything at all. And for, for the sake of practice, honestly, if you can make a weld like this with mill scale on it and not leave undercut, then it's pretty easy to do when you clean that mill scale off. So if you're welding a bunch of practice joints, I personally think it's, you know, it's, it's fine just to, to not clean them. In the field, if you're making a coated weld and it's going to be inspected and everything, it always welds better, even though it's stick welding. And yes, it'll burn through mill scale and all that. It'll weld better without that mill scale on there, and you'll be less likely to get undercut. So that second bead, that last bead in this case, uh, this is the third pass. So it's the last bead of this layer. I'm really, I'm really angling it up to the top member and all the while trying to hold a nice tight arc. 
and we're going to put three more over top of this and basically that's just lather rinse repeat you know from here on out but i will show them but i won't show a whole lot other than these arc shots so same thing i'm trying to overlap just a little bit more than halfway toward the upper upper side of this thing just going along as, with my travel speed slow enough that I don't leave undercut. Then I want to overlap halfway over top of that one. Trying all the while to keep my arc length nice and tight and my rod angle pretty consistent. Now, right here, I didn't think I had that much rod angle going on. So, you know, it... For me, anyway, I've always got more than I think. So if I'm if I'm making this well, then I think I've only got five degrees. I probably got ten or fifteen. But you also notice that's changing just a little bit as I go here. Not necessarily intentional. I don't guess it's changing a whole lot. There's a lot of forgiveness on on rod angle. If you get it too steep, the bead will crown up on overhead, and it will tend to mound up, and and you'll get some of that fallout. But this is not bad. This is working for me anyway. Watching the top edge of that puddle going slow enough not to leave any undercut, or I'm trying not to leave any undercut. So that was a single stringer pass, then two stacked over that, and then three stacked over that. And the thing that jumps out at me here is uh, I got lots of room for improvement. I need to go practice some more. But the biggest question is, did it penetrate? Did I have the amp set high enough to get good penetration? So we'll do a cut and etch test here, and we'll see. That's the only way to really tell for sure. And it looks like money. All right, quick summary. Quick summary. Arc length and rod angle probably make as much difference as anything. Of course, you need the right amperage. For a 1 8 7018, one amp per one thousandth of diameter of rod will get you in the ballpark. If you're on the metric system, 40 amps per millimeter. So 125 amps is one amp per one thousandth of, of thickness of rod, and that is pretty good. Actually, that's a pretty good setting for overhead welding. You could weld as hot as probably 135 or 140, but what happens is, at least in my experience, the higher you get in the amperage, yes, it, it fires off great, your restarts are great, it works great for half the rod. Then that last half of the rod, the rod is hot, it's burning off differently. Now you've got some arc blow to deal with because magnetic forces are setting up in your workpiece and it runs differently that last half of the rod. You start having to really cram it in there to keep from undercutting and things like that. So I've, you got to find a balance. You got to find a setting, an arc amperage setting that is high enough so that you can run good and hot and you keep a good tight arc but not so high that you get arc blow and the rod gets crazy at the end of the rod. So for me, 125 amps is about there. All I'm saying is trial and error. You got to learn your machine, learn your machine. See you next time. Hey, just a reminder, my online store is at weldmonger.com. That is how I support these videos. And I would appreciate it if you would give it a visit weldmonger.com.